Raspberry Pi Connect is a great service. Now this is my Raspberry Pi 5 which is obviously connected to my internet. I can access it from anywhere in the world with my MacBook or my phone or my iPad. If I go to the website and log in, and I've already signed in before so it will just allow me straight in, and you can see here this Pi was last seen less than a minute ago. So I can click on that to connect and we're in. And I can use my Pi, I can copy and paste things from my MacBook, I can update, I can launch app services, use the web browser, all sorts of things, all free and very straightforward. But it's not as good on a touchscreen device, it's definitely more for devices with a mouse and keyboard. So what solutions are there to use something like a tablet or a phone? So with the iPads, the issue is that uh, if we launch something that requires us to put in text, so say for instance terminal, uh, and we tap it, it doesn't give us a keyboard. And because now we're based on Wayland, a lot of the on-screen keyboards just don't work anymore. They always used to, but they just don't work anymore. And you can kind of get around this by uh, using, so say for instance if I put text in here, so sudo apt update, and then I copy that text, and we use the functionality on here to paste to remote. We can get around it, uh, but we still don't have an enter key, uh, and so it, it just is a little clumsy. Uh, and also it doesn't pinch to zoom in the way that I would like it to. So we can grab, if you can see a little bit of the white line at the top or the bottom, you can move it up and down, but you can't really resize it very well. Uh, again, with mouse and keyboard, this isn't an issue, but it would be really nice to be able to zoom into certain parts of the screen uh, like you always have been able to with VNC. This is obviously an early version of this, so it's to be expected. But there is a good solution, and that's by using an iPhone, uh, or probably an Android phone as well. So you can see here I've got an app called Blue Touch. Let's click on that and connect to the device. Oh, it's because it's been connected before. So basically what's happening now is my phone is pretending to be a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, which works with all sorts of devices, so I can control uh, a TV with it, I control a Windows computer, a Mac or whatever. Um, but it's certainly very useful in this. So if you see, I'm moving the mouse pointer around now. Uh, and if I want to perform that update, I can tap on the keyboard and I can hit enter. And you can see that it's performed that task. Uh, and if I put it in landscape mode, you can see I can use that as well. Uh, just tap that and I get my mouse control here as well. So if I want to open up the browser so I can do that here so let's go with chromium uh, I actually slowed down the mouse pointer and it's a bit too slow now uh, so I'll probably need to speed it up again but if I do a search so let's go back to the keyboard and let's go BBC and sport and hit enter you can see I'm now using the web browser as normal there's loads of functionality in this there's all sorts of shortcuts and various different keyboards and things like that it is a really cool app but I don't always have my phone and my iPad. I would quite like to be able to control it from just my phone. And there is a thread on the forums that tells you how to do it. So it's this post from Terrible Ted, uh, how to install an on-screen keyboard to bookworm. Most on-screen keyboards like Matchbox Keyboard do not work under Wayland. This process will install both Matchbox Keyboard for X11 use and WVKBD for use under Wayland. So set the localizations in the preferences. So that must be in here. Raspberry Pi configuration. Localization. English United Kingdom, that's all all right. So looks like it has been fixed. Copy the files in this example. So it must be this. And they copied them to home Pi. Let's open that up. So copy and home. And if we go to root and home. So mine is Lee PSP video. So let's paste that in there. And we also need some other wvkbd.desktop and toggle. I guess they might all be in here. Let's extract here. Yeah, they're all here, look. So we can delete that. Make sure toggle.sh is set to executable. So right click and properties, 
permissions execute by anyone yeah that's fine install matchbox keyboard so let's just minimize that and do Control alt t to open a terminal and we can copy this in and paste and yes replace the default terrible matchbox keyboard copy the new xml file in so let's see if this works The above replaces the Matchbox keyboard with a new keyboard layout in case you ever switch back to X environment. Install WVKBD. So let's paste that in. This creates WVKBD ex executable in user bin. So we've got to copy these over. And these as well. So open file manager, enable hidden files, view show hidden files, open folder dot config, edit the WF panel any as follows. WF panel any. So under the 003 line, we need to copy this in. So copy and paste that in. Save the file. A new icon should appear to toggle the on-screen keyboard. Oh, it is. It's here. Look. Cool. My toggle sh script has set the colors and size to my liking. You, you can edit this bash script to set whatever options you prefer. Also, when everything is working, you may delete the files from HomePy where you copied them. So we try it. Haha, <laughs> wow. Excellent. And we've got symbols, ABC. We've even got emojis on here. Numbers. Oh, there's loads. Yeah, that is excellent, and it's really nice and clear. Right, I need to tie that on a touch screen in a minute. So uh, that's all working, so we can delete those files that we added. I don't mind that it's on the left-hand side. I think that's quite handy. And it just does what you want it to do. Perfect. So back on my iPad, you can see the keyboard toggle at the bottom here. So if we tap on that, it comes up straight away. I can tap in here, and I can start typing. So say, for instance, NeoFetch. Sometimes misses the first uh, letter, so just watch out for that. But it does seem to be fine after it's done the first letter. Yeah, NeoFetch has come up. And that looks big enough that it will be big enough on a phone as well. Again, you can change that script to, to play around with the settings because there's a lot in here and probably a lot that I wouldn't necessarily use. Although occasionally you get something on a Pi where you need an obscure key. Uh, and yeah, we've got all the cursors here. We've got cursor to the end, cursor to the beginning. Uh, we've got the emojis. We've got all the numbers and things like that. So if you're doing lots with numbers, that's pretty handy. Uh, oh, we've got cursors on this one as well. I'd maybe add that as the touch, uh, the second touch screen for me. So I've got cursors sort of straight away. But uh, yeah, I can definitely play around with that. Yeah, really happy with that. So that definitely means that I can control my Raspberry Pi from wherever I am in the world from my mobile phone with a touch screen and keyboard. Be nice to be able to toggle between different touch screen modes like you can with VNC where you can change to a mouse pointer compared to just being able to touch on screen to get rid of things. Uh, I'd like to be able to move the mouse pointer and have a left and a right click button. I know you can press and hold for right click, um, but uh, it's nice to be able to switch between the two. But yeah, that, that definitely makes it loads more usable for me. So great work by Terrible Ted. And uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.